Okay, this is section 1.2, linear measure. Linear has the word line in it, so we're going to be working with lines. And measurement, there are lots of jobs out there where you're going to need to work with measurement. Um, this, in general, seems like to be, a, on the surface, a pretty easy section, but I've had students that have really struggled with this. So please pay attention throughout this particular lesson. Um, first of all, we need to know the difference between a line and a segment. And as, uh, as I was shown in class, this line with this arrow at the end means it goes on forever and ever. We just can't draw it forever and ever. So this is how we represent that. A segment, however, is only a portion of a line. It's just one little, little segment of the line. And usually we denote that with some endpoints. Okay, so you're going to make sure you put those little circles on the end and that's going to be considered a segment. It would be like if you cut the string, that those where the cuts were made would be the end points. Okay, example number one. We're going to find the distance from X to Z. So in other words, when you see this, okay, you see an X and a Z and there's no line above it or below it or any kind of writing or symbolism around it, that means you're finding the distance or how far it is or the measurement between the X and the Z. Okay? So basically, if it was just like a 4 and a 2, wouldn't you say this segment is 4 units long, this segment is 2 units long, so the total segment is 6 units. However, are there not 4 and 2 in this case? We're going to make it a little more interesting, a little more fun. 4 and 3 eighths plus 2 and a half. Okay, we're going to add 4 and 2. That gives us 6. Oh, goodness, how am I going to add 3 eighths and 1 half? I'm going to add it using a common denominator. 1 half turns into 4 eighths, right? 1 half and 4 eighths are the same thing. So is 3, 6. So is 6 over 12. The only thing is we want it to be an eighths, so we have a common denominator. This gives us 7 eighths. So we actually have a total of 6 and 7 eighths. Another way to do this, if you're like a little lost in the fraction, you can turn this into an improper fraction. 4 times 8 is 32. Add 3, you get 35 eighths. And then you can add over here, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. You get 5 halves. Find a common denominator, go on and on and on. If you would like to see me do that, please mention it in class and I can go through it. But I think in general, unfortunately from the math teacher standpoint, you're going to put that into your, graph, or your calculator. Ugh. All right, example number two. Find LM. What does that mean again? Find the distance from L to M. This time, they've given us the entire length of the segment, which is 4, and they've given us the other portion, which is 2.6. So I'm going to have to subtract 4 minus 2.6. Okay, hopefully you have your calculator with you, but that would be 1.4. And of course, I made a mistake. Oh dear. I should label that 1.4 centimeters. I didn't make the mistake here, but on this one, our answer should be 6 and 7 eighths inches. Okay, so this would actually, I would have missed a point on the quiz or test for that. Okay, example two, we already did that one. Example number three, if find A, they want us to find this little value of A. Okay, and they're throwing the algebra in there. And although, granted, if you're working on a construction site, you're probably not going to have to use a 4a plus 10, but the, this book is wonderful for making us and forcing us to have to keep up on those algebra skills, which is wonderful because next you're going to take algebra 2 when you're a junior. So find the value of a if the distance from a to b is 4a plus 10, and if the distance from B to C is 3A minus 5, and once again, read these questions on your homework, they tell us the full length from A to C is 19. So I'm going to write that on here, that from here to here is 19. Okay, so read the whole thing so you get all the information. 4A plus 10 plus this 3A minus 5 would give us the full length. So 4A plus 10 plus 3A minus 5 is going to equal 19. Quick review of algebra. 
add like terms, 3a and 4a is 7a. 10 minus 5 is 5, and our total is 19. Okay, what am I going to do next? I've got a 7a and a 5. These, if you had me for algebra 1, I would say these are out of date, and this is your little brother. Basically, this is combined together. I've got to move this, so I subtract 5 from both sides. So I have 7a is equal to 19 minus 5, which is 14. 14 divided by 7, because i got to get the a by itself. How do I undo 7 times a? I divide by a. And 14 divided by 7 is 2. So the a value is 2. And we should go back and double check. If I put a 2 in here, I have 4 times 2, which is 8. 8 plus 10 is 18. If I put a 2 in here, I have 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. Do 18 and 1 add up to 19? Well, I certainly they do. So we're on to the next problem. Okay, this is where I have the problems with most of my students in my class here. Example number four. Not only do you have to read the entire thing, I think it's best that you draw a picture as well. It says find x and st if t is between s and u. st is 7x, su is 45, and tu is 5x minus 3. So we have to find two things. Okay, t is between s and u, so I'm going to draw a picture. We are working with cycles here, and I've got a T in between S and U. And I'm sorry, we don't know if the T is in the middle, we don't know if it's to the right or the left. It actually will not matter when you draw your picture, so just plunk down a T somewhere. Now we're going to write down ST is 7X, so I'm going to put that like I did on the previous problem, it was already written there for us. Um, SU is 45. And TU is 5x minus 3. So now let's look at this, the overall picture. If I add these pieces up, 7x plus the 5x minus 3, that should total 45. So that's how I'm going to write my problem out. I'm going to say 7x plus 5x minus 3 is equal to 45. And now combine like terms. Solve by adding, I'm not going to write down add 3 to both sides, but that's what I'm doing there. I'm adding 3, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 12. 48 divided by 12 is 4. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So now I have x is equal to 4. Now, this would be where I'd make my mistake. I would move on to the next problem. However, it says find x and find the distance from s to t. So I have to find this piece right here. If I know that x is 4, then I'm going to put a, uh, put a 4 in for x. 7 times 4 is 28. So the distance from s to t is 7 times 4, or 28. And I do not have a unit on this. There is no inches or centimeters to work with. So x is 4, and the distance is 28. Uh, another little piece we need to know, congruent. When segments have the same, me same measure. That's what we talk about when they're congruent. It's like a fancy way of saying equal, but generally congruent deals with uh, shapes or segments and geometry. So you'll use congruent quite a bit. Here's a picture. All the sides are congruent. Here's one way that we can show. We put a mark here to say this and this and this and this are all the same. Okay, you don't have to put one little slash mark for that. You can put two. Okay, you can say, so that means that this side is congruent to this side. And if you needed to, you could put three little marks. And to be honest, I have never seen four or five marks on a side. So uh, if you see that, if you ever find that, let me know. And then if we ever wanted to say our segments are congruent, so if you had segment AB and you wanted to set it congruent, this is the symbol you would use. Notice how it's very simple. Similar to the equal sign, it's just that it's geometry. So we put the squiggle on top, and that just shows us that these two things are going to be congruent. Okay, that is your congruency symbol. I think we'll run into this again. Oh, well, isn't that funny? 
This next problem has the congruency symbols on it. They say find the distance from S to E. Okay, well, we basically are saying that this distance right here is the same as the distance from this to this. Okay, if you wanted to be really algebraic about it, you could say, hey, this x and this has got to be the same amount, so it's x. So you could say 2x equals 4 and 5 eighths, and then I would, myself, turn this into an improper fraction. Okay, that would be 4 times 8, which is 32. Add 5, you get 37, 37 eighths. Divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Am I blowing you away right now? I have a feeling a lot of you are like, what am I doing? I actually would love this answer, 37 over 16 um, inches. Okay, um, you can give me the equivalent. Um, 16 goes into 37 two times and then 5 sixteenths, and I have a sneaking suspicion. I used to be really, I wanted to see all of the math. I need to see something for an answer like this, but a lot of you are going to go to your calculators and do this, aren't you? And your answer should come out, oh, probably not the fraction. You might get a decimal, and then you'll turn it into a fraction, uh, but that's what your answer should be on this. Okay, um, that's the end of the lesson. Make sure you got everything written down that you need, and we will discuss any questions in class uh, tomorrow.